So this is a serious story. This is uh, from Axios here. They have a tweet thread uh, where just past the one-year anniversary of the Afghanistan withdrawal, where we took all the boots on the ground out of there. But here's what they say. One year after the U.S. withdrew from Afghanistan and the Taliban retook control, which, by the way, happened in like seven minutes, the Afghan people have borne the brunt of a collapsed economy, deepening humanitarian crisis, and deteriorating human rights situation. Afghanistan's economy has imploded over the last year. The country entered 2021 reliant on foreign aid for 75% of public spending. When the U.S. withdrew, that grant funding disappeared, and some $9 billion of Afghan central bank assets were frozen. $9 billion, in this instance, of their own money, their central bank assets, was frozen. The U.S. froze about $7 billion of those Afghan central bank funds. Biden then allowed half of that money to potentially get redirected to rich Americans, including about 150 families who stand to receive eight-figure payouts. So this is, remember we covered this, Biden saying, oh, we're going to go ahead and give it to the uh, families of 9-11 victims. Well, hold on. Nobody is defending the Taliban. They didn't commit 9-11, though. They didn't do that. Al-Qaeda did that. Now they say, oh, well, they housed Al-Qaeda after the fact. Okay, but Saudi Arabia is like our top ally, and you're not taking money from them and giving it to the 9-11 families, even though they're directly responsible for 9-11. As we know, even more so than we originally thought. 15 of the 19 hijackers, Saudi, they had direct a direct hand in funding it. And Saudi, Arabi Saudi Arabian money is not going to the 9-11 families, but the the central bank assets of the government of Afghanistan are going to the 9-11 victims' families? What are we talking about here? What is this? On top of that, sanctions on money flows... Sanctions on money flows to anybody associated with the Taliban. Sanction on money flows to anybody associated with the Taliban have had a chilling effect more broadly. Many foreign banks are unwilling to process foreign currency transactions involving Afghan banks, per Human Rights Watch. Afghanistan's poverty rate is 70%, 70%, with over half the population suffering from acute food insecurity. In layman's terms, they're starving. Basic household goods inflation is running at 52% year-on-year. Per capita income is about $375 a year, its lowest level in over a decade. About 24 million Afghans. Over half the country's population are in need of humanitarian assistance. At least 1.1 million Afghan children are expect to, expected to suffer from the most severe form of malnutrition this year. The Taliban promised they'd changed, especially on human rights. But a year later, schools are closed to most girls and young women after grade six. There's been a media crackdown and arbitrary arrests and summary executions of dissidents have been reported. So that's your your overview, your breakdown of what's going on in Afghanistan. And I mean the the easy part is that hey, look at that, the Taliban is brutal and they're a, a theocratic dictatorship. They're anti-women's rights, they're anti-gay rights, obviously. Uh, they're, they're authoritarian when it comes to the media, and they crack down. Of course, they don't allow any semblance of free speech. There's summary executions, etc. All that stuff is obvious. And nobody supports that. But the issue here is, the issue is, if we are freezing the Afghan government's uh, own money because the Taliban runs the country, who suffers as a result of that? Well, we just explained it to you. 70%, 75% of the country. We're talking about innocent civilians. We're talking about women and children. The country is starving, and they don't need to be starving. We are actively choosing to have them starve. Why? Because Biden is afraid if he releases that money, Republicans will use this to attack him and say, uh, you know, Joe Biden is weak, and Joe Biden is funding the Taliban. Joe Biden is giving the Taliban billions and billions of dollars, and that is unacceptable. He knows that that's the political attack that's going to come if he releases this money. And he's so scared of that political attack, he's sentencing innocent civilians, 
women, and babies to starve to death. And that's not an exaggeration. That's not hyperbole. This is the real world that we're talking about here. And the fact of the matter is, look, I think you give credit for Biden taking all of the boots on the ground out of Afghanistan. It should have happened a long time ago. Trump was all talk. He should have done it day one. He didn't do it. You give credit for that. But now, with the ruthless sanctions and the impact it's having, it's almost like what's happening now is arguably worse than the war. Because how many thousands of people might end up dying from starvation, dying in the most brutal ways imaginable, simply because Biden didn't want to give in to the optics of a right-wing smear attack. When the, the easy reaction, if Republicans say that, is the truth. No, we're making sure women and babies don't starve. Why are you in favor of women and babies starving? Why do you think we have the right to seize the money of a foreign government? That's their money. Because of our war crimes, should, I don't know, Finland be able to seize all of our national funds? Nobody would agree to that. So what kind of standard are we operating with here? So anyway, just to put the fine point on it here, this is in Business Insider. Biden administration refuses to release $7 billion in frozen funds from Afghanistan after U.S. forces found and killed al-Qaeda's leader in Kabul. So in other words, even after we got the, the guy, you know, the number two at al-Qaeda, al-Zawahiri, um, even after we got him, He's like, no, I'm not going to release the funds. Well, hold on. If the whole argument was because the Taliban is housing al-Qaeda leaders, we're not going to give them their money back. Well, now the al-Qaeda leader's gone, dead, donezo, over. It's a Rapskis. He's still like, no, I'm not going to give the, the money. Well, then again, you're sentencing 70, 75% of the country to live in extreme poverty. You're sentencing people to die from not having enough food. And he doesn't care. He doesn't care. You know, they're brown, they're over there, they're with the enemy or whatever. No, the civilians in Afghanistan are the victims of the Taliban. That's what they are. And you are punishing them because of the Taliban. So, you know, in that equation, there are no good guys. The Taliban's obviously not good. And then we're not good for further exacerbating the hurt and the pain and the suffering. So this is... One of his biggest failures. I mean, there's a lot of them. This is one of his biggest ones. The other one would be saying he was going to get back in the Iran deal and then just not doing that. He had the authority to do that on day one. He's not doing it. Instead, he's trying to, like, renegotiate it or something. Renegotiate what? We violated the deal. We pulled out of the deal. And now you want to force them to abide by the terms of the deal without us even being in it? And then renegotiate it? Why? How? We have the deal. It's already done. You get back in it. We get back in it. Nope. Didn't want to do it. So this is as barbaric as it gets. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.